Coming up on this episode of The New Fly Fisher, we're dancing with giant cutthroat, rainbows, and brown trouts at a Three Rivers Ranch in Warm River, Idaho. This big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. Ooh, let's get this guy in the net. That is amazing. There's a take. Oh, nice. Power, all right. The new fly fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue. Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada. In the heart of eastern Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, sits the small potato town of Ashton. Ashton is the closest town to the hamlet of Warm River. The Warm River runs Freestone as a tributary of the legendary Henry's Fork of the Snake River and plays host to the historically significant Three Rivers Ranch. If you're looking for a secluded fly fishing getaway, look no further than Three Rivers Ranch. After all, Warm River has a recent permanent resident population of just three people. The Three Rivers Ranch story seems to begin in the early 1930s. However, the first homestead constructed in the property was at the turn of the century. The business was created to offer provisions to train tourists heading into Yellowstone Park. Then, the only way into the park was by train through Warm River. As people traveled to experience the park then, today we are on our way to experience the legendary fishing Yellowstone Teton Territory has to offer. Our host at Three Rivers Ranch is fourth generation Warm Riverite and entrepreneur Lonnie Allen. We get settled and meet our guides for the week, Logan Martindale and BJ Gerhardt. Joining me on this trip to Eastern Idaho is good pal, Tom Rosenbauer. We get loaded up and make the decision to hit the famed Henry's Fork. It's late September and we're on the make for rainbow, cutthroat, hybrid, and brown trout. So here we are on the shores of the famed Henry's Fork. This is Logan Martindale. He's gonna be our guide for the week out of Three Rivers Ranch. Logan, this is a storied river. What are we in for? Today on the, on the lower Henry's Fork, we're uh... We're gonna be doing dry dropper. Um, we're not looking for quantity of fish, but quality of fish today. Right, so size matters, right? Size matters down here. Awesome, awesome. So brown trouts with the odd rainbow, we're in for an unbelievable day. Here on the Henry's Fork, on I can't Henry's believe Fork. it. We're gonna be fishing on the right side when we get up here. Okay. And when we get over here. And I'm a lefty, so you know. Okay, perfect. Okay. I'm sure you know the game. As soon as that goes down, set that hook. When you said it, goes straight up. I begin fishing a dry dropper while Tom is casting streamers. One of the things that I enjoy about fishing with a quality good guide, especially here at a Three Rivers Ranch, is the level of communication that happens when you guys are fishing together. And that's the point, is that you are actually fishing as a team. Logan's got his eyes on the next piece of structure downstream, while I've got my eyes on the hopper or the point fly. Now, the cool thing about it is that this may look like a giant river, but what is really going on is it's a bunch of little rivers within one. So it may be overwhelming and it may be freaky that there's so much water and so much structure, but a good guide's job is to say, okay, you've got a seam here, a seam here, a seam here. Instead of looking at everything as a whole, you pare it down into a micro river so that you can pick it apart and fish it effectively. We have yet to catch a fish. That's okay. That's the way it goes. But we're having fun picking this river apart and putting the flies where those fish live. We just need to fi figure out what they're eating and it's gonna light up. Ooh, that's, that, oh, was that was a, a fish. fish. That was a fish. Armed one. All right, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. While Logan and I fish more finesse, Tom and BJ are seeing success with a streamer. Right there, come on, that'd be a fish right there. 
Ah, oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Streamer fishing is so exciting. It's so visual and it's violent, but it, it isn't always on. You would think you could just throw a streamer out here and a big brown trout, if he's around, would just jump on it. But that's not the case. Some days a streamer bite is on, some days it's not. Luckily, today the streamer bite is on for us. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Is that a fish? I couldn't tell. I couldn't see it either. Yeah, I don't know if that was bottom or... Might have took him a bit. Oh, that, oh, was... that was a flash. Yeah. Oh. There he is. There he is. That's a different fish. Oh, yeah. Much better. That's the one that came out from underneath the first time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good boy. Work. Fishing tight to that cover. Yeah. Got to do it. That's a nice fish. Yep. Hmm. Wow. Nice fish. Yeah. Beautiful. Big pretty, old. pretty. Thick fish. Thick, thick fish. Mm. Good boy. That's Good boy. Yeah, see, he's still cranky. Yeah. So the weather's changed here um, on the Henry's Fork over the last couple of days, and it's actually bluebird nice, and, uh, and these fish aren't liking it. So we're gonna change things up on Logan's suggestion to change things up a little bit. We're actually gonna put a swing into our um, presentation today. So what I'm doing is I'm casting this hopper dropper 90 degrees across with a big mend upstream, and I'm, let, and I'm letting it fish down on a dead drift. We've got two nymphs underneath the hopper. What happens at the end of the cast is I'm going to let it come tight out in its lane, but I'm gonna stack mend the line so that the fly line is, is straight upstream from the fly. Then I'm gonna give it a little flick over to the left, let it come across, little flick over to the left, let it come across, another, till it's 90 degrees. So instead of swinging it like you would swinging steelhead or salmon, you're actually doing micro swings in the full presentation. Every time you do one of those smaller mends, it creates the fly, the nymphs, to move a little bit. And that could be the trigger to get these big brown trout and rainbow trout. Decent fish. So we just stopped for lunch. We're just about to, like, we're still on the bank. <laughs> and we're just about to kick off. And I decided to throw the dry dropper out into this run and first cast of the afternoon. It's a good one. Big tail. Yeah. Try to keep them over here out of that stuff. Okay, now come back up to the boat. Nice work. Sweet, man. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Great fish. Now, is that typical, a typical fish that you catch here at a, at a Henry's say, Fork? I would say that's, for this float, it's probably average, maybe slightly bigger than average. Nice. Henry's Fork Rainbow Trout. That'll play, won't it? That's great. This afternoon's <clears throat> gonna turn on. It's gonna be good. <laughs> nice work. As we head down river, the afternoon hatch takes off. There's a ton of bugs on the line. We might have a lot of fun down here. It gets really slow, deep water down here. Uh-huh. That's fit, we call it the Fun Farm backwater. Those fish will just sip like they were up there. One of the things I love about fishing trout in the West is that, you know, no matter whether you're walking or wading or you're floating, if you put your time in, something remarkable might just happen. Now, if you look downstream of me here, there are heads popping up everywhere. We've been waiting for a blue-winged olive hatch to go off this morning around 11 o'clock, but it's been cold here in Idaho and it hasn't really happened. But if you look on the surface of the water, there are literally trillions of bugs everywhere and all these big boys are coming up to feed. So what we're gonna do is, Logan is setting me up with a dry fly system, um, which has a, uh, a blue wing olive and an emerger. And what we're gonna do is actually pick our fish, get the timing of the fish to see how and when it's rising, and then attempt to place that fly in its lane when it's ready to eat. Now, as Logan just said to me, Mark, this could be an all or nothing venture, but you know what, it doesn't matter. Just to be able to watch this is fantastic and to have a shot at them, even better. <laughs> Look at that. 
Nice. Nice work. That's where teamwork comes in, because I was looking at the wrong bug, man. I really was. Good work. Took the dry fly. Sure. Nice work. Cool, man. Great little brown trout. So stealth is the key, hey, Logan? Yes, sir. 5X. Nice cast. Good fish. The world's yours. Good cast. Thanks, man. Ooh, that was that was you. It was? Yeah. Hey. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I get frustrated breaking off a merger after a merger and ask Logan to show me how it's done. Man, he makes it look easy. <laughs> so I've been struggling all afternoon with these dry flies for these trout in super calm water. And um, I said to Logan, hey man, show me how it's done. Three fish surfaced, he bombs one down there, eat, set, done, it's over. Nice. Nice brown, man. Thank you. And thanks for demonstrating to me the set technique. I mean, like you, you set immediately and you set lightly, right? And that was the key where I've been setting hard and ripping things off. Yellowstone Teton territory is dissected by some of the world's most famous trout streams. Slow meandering streams like the Teton River to big systems like the Henry's Fork and the South Fork of the Snake thread themselves through miles of southeastern Idaho. For trout anglers, it really is what multi-species big fish dreams are made of. Today is Guide's Choice. After that is uh, algae. So how do you yeah. want me to fish this? Cast to the bank and then just strip it. Yeah, that little mend is good. Good long pulls with a pause as you're reaching up to grab that line again. And a lot of times they'll like that pause to come and get it, just like an injured fish, just giving them a chance to catch up to it. And if you see one coming, don't don't change yep. your, your strip, because whatever you were doing has got him interested or hungry, whatever it may be. Fish. Good fish. Nice, man. Right off that clump of grass right yep. there. Good fish on the streamer. We've been switching it up a little bit to see what color they're looking at and size of fly. And put the white, is this a sex dungeon on here? Uh, that's actually called a trout slider. And it's a cutthroat. It is. Good fish. Nice fish, good job. That's an awesome, awesome cutthroat. Good fish. Woohoo! Pure cut, no spots towards the head. Crimson, orange. Good fish. Nice. That didn't take long. That did not take long. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was snagged or not. What was that? Whoa! Nice that brown. Yeah. Nice. Good work. Got a lot of heart, that's for sure. Yeah. It's a good fish. Was that first cast? Yeah, I think it was <laughs> yeah. a first cast. <laughs> oh, that's bad luck, though. I know. <laughs> Catching a fish on your first cast. That's Kiss of death. That's really bad luck. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Yeah. Here we go, Tom. Here we go. Nice oh. work. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it popped right out. Oh, Woo. what a great fish. Oh, man. Beauty. Beauty, beauty, female. Yep. God, look at her. Oh, so pretty, so pretty. Okay. Mm. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. That was awesome. Thanks to Logan with the fly selection and a lucky first cast <laughs> on a dry dropper.
I'm changing up because we are just catching a high amount of whitefish and there's plenty of trout and blue wings. Um, and we have risers, so we might as well headhunt. And uh, I'm gonna put on an October caddis along with a blue wing in the back. So hopefully the October caddis will get eaten, especially when you go to mend it. At first, you'll have a little movement to set your flies up for the drift. October caddis with that movement will maybe entice some of the big guys to come up. It's the only big bug we have currently at this time of, the time of year. Let it come out. Little mend, easy. Eat out. Sorry. Go again. Oh, easy. Leave it. Set, set. That was the October caddis. Nice. Good fish. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that was a cutty. Wow, what fun on dry fly. Woo. Good work. Nice fish, too. Yeah. It's funny, you get you get a little bit jaded by watching the the blue wing. Yeah. And <laughs> you missed it. And you missed the obvious one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. He was in there eating blue wings and he's seen a big big food to come and he, that's what he went for. As we were having lunch, there was a bunch of blue wing olives that went off. We started seeing fish coming up and BJ noticed a riser over here out of the boat over by these, these logs and it wasn't too cast and we managed to get ourselves a cutthroat. On the, on the blue wing olive too. All right. That was fun. Good work. Good eyes, man. Thank you. Yeah. Fly pops out. How do you like that on dry fly? That's fantastic. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you, sir. Shake your hand with a fly. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. This is a great situation to demonstrate how proper mending can make the difference in catching fish and dragging flies. Early in this sequence, I was mending upstream in water that is slower closer to me. A simple adjustment of mending downstream when water closest to you is slower than the main current allows the flies to drift naturally, without drag, and the fish respond. Leave it. Leave it. Set. There he is. Nice. Oh, what fun. It's a good fish, too. Yeah. Looks very bow-like. It does. So hang on, that one's gonna have a lot more... A lot more junk? A lot more, uh... That's Cuddy, it's hybrid. Nice cutty. good one. They're still feeding here, too. They go right back to eating. <laughs> really, fish? Right to my feet. Likes the shadow. Oh man, that's the best one today. Hybrid. This morning, couldn't get the timing right. Takes a little practice. Once you get it down, the fishing's fantastic. Good job. Thanks, man. It's funny, you know, you see one little rise over there. BJ noticed it. Four fish. Not on the October caddis. <laughs> that was not. That was on. Oh, that's a good fish. That is a good fish. That's a really good fish. That's a good fish, yeah. Good. He took off like a banshee. <laughs> Knocked me over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was so this is 4X on here, right? Uh, or is it down to five? Five. I went back to five. That's the best fish of the day right it there is. so far. So far. Oh man. And they're still and then they're back to feeding again. Yeah. Yeah, my. What a fish. That's a purebred too. Alright, let's take a look at this guy. About a 
20 inch cutty. 20 inch cutthroat, how do you like that? You put your time in and you will be rewarded. Three Rivers Ranch in Warm River, Idaho is a staple for fly anglers in the Yellowstone Teton Territory. Seven private luxury catmans expertly furnished leave no amenity unthought of. And they are all nestled along a private stretch of Robinson's Creek. The historic main lodge allows you to step back in time to experience the ranch's storied past. Chef Karen Roberts, a 40-year staple of Three Rivers, ensures you're well looked after at the lodge and on the water. Three Rivers Ranch is home away from home for anglers to realize their fly fishing dreams in one of Idaho's true jewels, Yellowstone Teton Territory. We head back to the middle of the Henry's Fork in search of brown trout. The weather is starting to turn for the worse. With a cold front moving in quickly, it's perfect for throwing streamers for pre-spawn browns. Good. Because she came out from underneath that tree, didn't she? Yep, she sure did. Good one. Came out of that little hole in there. Nice. All right. Look at the weather out here. Look at how snotty it is. It's blowing 40. It's cold. It's cloudy. Perfect brown trout weather. Yeah, with this front coming in, it's blowing these clouds in. It's got these big fish on the prow to hunt. That real bright, sunny weather you know, that we had earlier today is gone. So um, perfect time in the evening, that witching hour, and uh, just cloud cover. Couldn't ask for better uh, brown trout, you know, streamer weather. So uh, hopefully they just keep keeping it up. Ooh. Did you touch it? Nope. So when you cast it out there, mend it before you strip it. Up or down? Up. By the time to sink a bit. Well, that and it gets it there straight it on. Yeah. There's a good fish. Great tip, BJ. Thank you. Yep. Oh, yeah. Now, I really appreciate what BJ is doing right now because he's actually keeping me at a distance where I'm capable of casting in this nasty wind away from the bank. So I don't have a lot of line out um, that I have to deal with and negotiate. This is a great brown. So in keeping that out there, I can place the cast. I don't have to worry too much about line management. Um, and then on this last cast, he said, you know what, just give it a little mend up and see what, see what you can do. Oh, nice man. fish. Look at that. Woohoo! What a fish, BJ. Oh my gosh. Look at the blue on his cheek. Yeah. It's not even teal, it's blue. <laughs> He's looking at me. He is. <laughs> oh, that's a fantastic brown. So the reason you caught that fish, Mark, was that when as soon as you casted it out there, you gave it an upriver mend, which caused that fit, that streamer to come parallel to you and swim cross current instead of flying down river which is like a like a baseball player trying to hit a 90 mile per hour uh, fastball which is very difficult so instead of them coming and chasing it and waiting for that to finally swing which then makes it vulnerable you know prey that's when they'll eat it but if we're focusing on that water on the bank we want that to not be coming down the bank and coming finishing here close to the boat. We would rather have it kind of come parallel or upriver so it kind of ticks and then straightens out as the current catches it. That's the prime time for them to eat it as prey. When it starts to swing downriver at the boat, that's fine because we're kind of over that anyways. So good work, good job. There he is. Nice. Oh, did you see that boil? I saw the boil and watch the eat. You ready? Take your time. Take your time. These fish are tough. It's all right. Just be easy. And that's 2x. I mean, 
I've had fish in here blow up zero. Okay. Come on, darling. Every bit of this six weight put to work. Saw the boil. Yes! Look at that. Unbelievable. Man, this is turning out to be an absolutely unbelievable evening here on the Henry's Fork. Fish. Oh, another good brown. Are you kidding me? Get him on the reel. He's going uptown. Oh, it's a rainbow. Yeah. Sweet. Head up, slide, 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 back, 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 back. There you go. All right, look at that. Look at the colors on that. It's lit right up, just like that rainbow. Yep. So when the weather turns south, the winds pick up and the barometer drops. It's brown trout time. Equipment for this big trout adventure in Yellowstone Teton territory out of Three Rivers Ranch is as follows. Both Tom and I were wielding five and six weight nine foot fly rods with matching weight forward floating lines. Leaders consisted of nine to 12 foot 3X trout tapered leaders with four and five X tippets for dry flies and four to five foot 2X leaders for streamers. Our final day at Three Rivers Ranch finds us heading to the south fork of the Snake River, back with guide Logan Martindale. Dry dropper is the key for the day as the weather had taken a turn for the better. I'm really excited for today. This is the south fork of the Snake River where we have four species that we're gonna target. Browns, rainbows, hybrids, and of course, cutthroat. This is unbelievable. The water is super clear. We should be able to see everything. I am pumped for today. Ooh, nice. Eight though. Hopper. Chubby. Awesome, awesome. That is what I absolutely live for. Never take your eyes off that dry fly because it's gonna happen when you look away. Man, what an eat. That was fantastic. Eat the chubby Chernobyl. Man, you can see those, that orange from here. They come up super slow and they eat readily. Nice fish. Nice work. Woohoo! Fish. It's interesting, when fishing banks, um, it's, it can be tough to know where to place your fly. And of course, each bank is, in, is an individual unto itself and it has its own characteristics. But what you can do is uh, use your mend to properly place where your fly needs to go. For example, I can see a great bubble line right here. That's where I want, it to, where I want the fly to land. I cast past it, give one mend, and it lands right in the bubble line, right where the food is for these for these fish. And there's one right there. Sweet! Nice brown trout, leaper jumper. So always try to put your, your indicator or your chubby or your flies in that line of bubbles, because that's where the food comes and that's where the fish are lying. Often there's a break seam what have you, they sit there, expend as less energy as they possibly can, and the result is right here. Sweet brown trout. Good job. Yep. Nice. Ooh, that's nice a big fish. fish. Oh my gosh, it's a giant. It's a giant. I'm gonna get this fish on the reel, it's that big. Fight him on a high rod tip. and take your time. The water's cold enough that you don't need to worry about exhausting these. Oh my gosh, Logan, it's huge. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up anchor. He ate the green bullet. Oh, I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath. There is zero saliva in my mouth. <laughs> this is a thrill of a lifetime on the South Fork. Yes! <laughs> oh, man. Are you kidding me? My man. Oh my oh. gosh, it's a stud. 
I can't believe it. Biggest brown trout of my life. We fought that fish through rapids, probably, you know, a couple hundred yards yeah. down this river. And I'm here to tell you that I'm about to show you the biggest brown trout I've ever caught on fly. That's great. Are you ready? That's awesome. This is why you come to Idaho, and this is why you come to Three Rivers Ranch. What an unbelievably amazing brown trout. Well, that about does it for this episode of The New Fly Fisher, coming to you from Yellowstone Teton Territory. Special thanks to Lonnie Allen, Doug Gibson, Logan Martindale, and BJ Gerhardt for everything Three Rivers Ranch. Remember, adventure is out there. All you have to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? For more on our series, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. For everybody here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. I'm Mark Melnick, and hopefully, We'll see you in the great state of Idaho, specifically Yellowstone Teton Territory. The new fly fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada.